This is dedicated to my grandparents, Tziva Katz and Chaim Alexandrovich. Zichonami Bracha. You know that nervous feeling that overcomes you when you think you've lost something important? When you fish your hand inside a pocket for a cell phone, iPod, or car keys, but nothing's there? A surge of hot adrenaline fills my face with red, and during this split second of a moment, I feel as though everything I have ever worried about swims to the surface of my eyelids. March 17, 2002, Frenchel, Jerusalem. My dad is late for work because I don't know what pair of socks to wear. A suicide bomber explodes two blocks from my bedroom window. I replay the explosion in slow motion. My chest starts a forest fire inside my rib cage. My throat, hovering, trapped, slowly plummets into my stomach into a claustrophobic inferno. I learn my third word in Hebrew, miklat, bomb shelter. The next week, this nine-year-old walks to school with an intifada and a backpack. No bus riding, no big crowd diving, no talking to strangers who look suspicious. Since when do men lighting up on Shabbos look suspicious? Since when do big black trench coats hide anything other than fat or heat or silver wristwatches? I remember when forgotten bags on the street corners didn't explode and published trash cans were homes for Bueno rappers, not tzatzot. They pour coke on the streets to dissolve the blood after terrorist attacks. As if the acid of soda pop sugar could remove the aftermath of spilled brother. Have you ever seen little boys with magenta beads play with their kafia brother in a sandbox? Imagine a fence between them to the moon and around it. Watch them in which arms could extend handshakes without leaving slingshot scars. The children play crane and build muddy force fields to protect themselves from each other. Let's jetpack away from here, from fighting over sand and toys here. Pretend like this game right now doesn't mean the world to us, the only world we know. Israel, I hear your Lashon Hara with crystallized earlobes. Watch you play tug of war between the West Bank and Gaza, pulling, trying to unite the puzzle pieces of landmasses divided before us. I unite. I join in, but I cannot promise I won't tie slip knots because Gilad Shalit Adain Chai somewhere in there. Over 1,746 days ago, over 160 million seconds ago, where extremists bulldoze schoolgirl ponytails in the 2000s. Tornado drills are gas mask preparation drills, and hiding go seek is 15 seconds to escape a Katusha rocket. I pray, please don't let them look like cousin, friend, father, or brother. I don't know what to say to the mother who is sunless and to the boy who is green line homeless. I don't know how to squeeze the hand that knows a Shokobus in one and the weight of an M16 in the other. Israel, I would walk through Oslo's door with you and barricade the hallway behind me with a fleet of doves so Third Intifada wouldn't barge in and corrupt Old City Jerusalem that's were holy but showcase the little boys who pray Allah and point guns at each other, playing like they have water in them. I don't even blink at the eyes of beggar when I say I don't have money for tzedakah, like I can't afford to donate a few tachama kazit bathroom trips into their thirsty palms. I cringe at the eyes that see purple thumbs and denied. I walk by with western white girl bleeding scars on my forehead like I know what dirty water tastes like. But I don't have to ask permission to cross the street at night. I just got here and I have all of my rights, bald and fists raised to the sky. I drive by the houses fenced in between enemy territory and stare at the kids who play shark on driveways. I wave and, and whisper, Ahlam wasalan. Wonder if they grow up feeling like fish out of water. They must pray to stop pretending they can breathe underwater, swimming in circles of hate, watching far foreign, listening to mother's call of Hilwa Hilwa. Echa temi cholim agid shetem watsim shalom, ava lo muhanim il mod shelanu. How can we even communicate? This country twists my heart out like a lemon, makes my brain seize like a sputtered engine. Israel, why do you have more stray cats than sidewalk cracks? Why do you nurse culture that condones ruthless bus drivers who don't stop for 80-year-old women or ambulances? And entice the man who gives me the wait a minute sign with his fingers while you have state controlled by black hatters. My children will guard their houses at night while they pray Messiah and babysit my tax dollars. When I hobble on the buses, shoulders aching from grocery bags, why can't I sit in the only seat open? I am Medusa, as if staring into my intoxicating blue eyes would stone them. It's 2011, and I sit Rosa because I have a vagina. What if being a Jew isn't about how many toilet paper squares I can pre-rip before Shabbos starts? What if the Jews were united? 
Will the Generation Yekka stop dancing around death with the batted eyelashes? Why does independence for one second have to cost a whole percent of the population? There are 300 million people living in the United States today. That's 3 million people dying for America for a taste of peace. But September 11th changed all that. Changed Arabic from spoken word to verbal, run for cover. So, Jewish American, you lived in Israel. How do you feel? Are you afraid to be Jewish? I come from a mother who praises God for apples before taking a bite, who thanks God for two holes at work right. I am two Holocaust grandparents, slaved Egypt, fleet Exodus. I am two triangles, Venn diagrammed onto my heart, Jew. I am not white-ish, blonde-ish, three-quarters of the winning-ish. This is not ish. Draw me jude yellow on my breastbone. Carve me hook nose, paint curly jew for what top this was at mine. Paint me with quarters on my feet, Jew. Giving to the needy Jew. Genocide survivor Jew. Never again Jew. Safta, I'm a survivor too. I'm living your dream. I breathe redemption. Israel, I am a free thinker. Thank you, Eichmann, who changed some deniers to believers so Israel doesn't have to be post-war hiding Yiddish in kitchen cupboards like Vietnam unspoken. I wear slippers here because Israel is my home. I move like a Reuben Reuben self-portrait. I etch a sketch murals of her with my toes. I paint her like a woman, mountains of ecstasy where her breast should be. I backpack across the curves of her soil terra and sleep along the trails of her spinal column. Her seas dance in circle around my irises. We are intertwined together in Hebrew colics. She immerses me through her culture and hydrates me even though her faucets cry water crisis. I absorb her through dehydrated lips and fingertips. She seduced me this year and I am in debt. I fell in love with 100 people under her son. Intimate, independent, Jews. I faced my fear of a change in heartbeat. Studied its rhythms and recorded patterns when I visited places like Hebron and Sterot. Next year, I'll ride the same buses, walk the same streets without your course, alone. Next year, I will serve in the IDF. I will cry the first time I put on my green uniform and adjust my kumta so it faces towards the heavens. I will run with pride, Israeli flag on my shoulders swaying behind me, brushing wind and leaves into the eyes of everyone who wants to catch me, push me Jew into the Mediterranean, but Israel, it's okay. I am a lifeguard. So tell me, who has a right to link pinkies of a brothers Isaac and Ishmael? I believe Khan Senesh. Khan Alexander. I can write about how I feel. Try to make masterpieces with letters and wait for faith to marinate under your fingernails. I can sit alone on my living room couch and chicken scratch passion on napkin corners. Dedicate this piece to my mother and to Bialik. Bless my food because it tastes better that way. Close my eyes and envision peace that doesn't feel like swimming through peanut butter and I won't have to sit on a double-edged sword of morality. I will whisper messages of peace into strangers' ears and hold onto hope in my pockets like fortune cookie wrappers. I ingest Israel's right to exist. <laughs>